Hello YouTubers, today I'm going to be covering a video about AR coding. So for those not familiar with that term, that stands for anti-reflective coding. It's commonly used in eyeglasses as well as especially on watch surfaces. So that way, you know, as you're looking at your watch um, dial, whatever ambient light may be around doesn't shine back and create a glare in your eyes. But they are also used in the flash eye industry for the purpose of reducing the reflection of the beam so that way I should say internal reflection of a beam as it's being cast so as to increase the output slightly so I'm sure you probably hear of it and you're just wondering hmm this is really a marketing term or does this really work in real life so that's what this video aims to find out right now what I have in front of me are two glasses that look for all intents and purposes identical right I mean as first blush doesn't look like there's any difference you know it looks like pretty much identical where they are different is that the one in my left hand is has a anti-reflective coating on both sides. So that's indicated by that kind of purplish hue that you can see in the reflection there, as opposed to this one that has no, reco uh, no coating at all. Now this particular piece came from a TN31 XML2 sample um, that for whatever reason, again, like I said, this just doesn't have the AR coding. So again, really quick, there versus that. Okay, now anti-reflective coatings, how they work as a premise is where basically, um, if I understand it, to simplify it into layman's term is that it cancels out certain wavelengths and it there is variation in the coating as well. So this particular coating that they had on the original through 19 31 glass is focused towards the purplish wavelength. Thus, you're seeing that purple reflection there. And again, this one without the recoding, uh, without the coating, as you can see there, it reflects more of that light back right thus the brighter one may argue that okay you know what it's the color and thus uh, thereby it looks like this is brighter okay that's a fair point but again we're going to actually go to get to my uh, PVC LMD to measure this okay so I've got the one with the anti-reflective coating installed right now and this is going to go onto my PVC LMD now this piece of glass doesn't matter because whatever penalty it incurs, both of them would receive it equally with the anti-reflective or the non-coding one installed. So I also do have this graph so that way you could actually see it in real time. Now I haven't calibrated this, but still it's in the ballpark of I think it was around 441 that it should be in for level four. The reason why I picked this level is because it's pretty much you know perfectly stabilized so that nothing else would impact it. It doesn't run too hot so the heat wouldn't impact it as well to give, like I said, both of them a fair playing ground. So Right, could I go ahead and get this turned on? So, as you can see right now, it's stabilized at about 440, 441 lumens. Dipping out 439 roughly. And just keep it there for a few seconds, so that way you get the graph. Okay, that should be sufficient. And now we're gonna go ahead and get it over to the non-AR coded one. Okay, and this is with the non-AR coded version. And here you can see it's stabilized around 435, 436. So that's a penalty of about roughly five lumens or so, give or take, one plus or minus one roughly. So in the greater scheme of things, this particular coating and glass combo, I think, what is that, five lumens out of about 440, what are you talking about, I don't know, 1%. So you're taking kind of like a 1% hit without it or 1% a game with it, uh, depending on your point of view. And that's up to you whether or not that's worth the cost because whether or not your eyes can see it, I'm not sure, I really doubt it. I would seriously, seriously doubt it. But if you absolutely, I mean, if you're the type of the enthusiast who must have every single last lumen output, you know, well, then the AR coding is an absolute must for you. All right, so there you have it. Of course, this was using the manufacturer samples. I have not tested other types of, you know, glass slash AR coding combo, but if anyone has suggestions for future tests or what they would like to see on the TN31, because, you know, since that's kind of like the um, my test bed, throw me a comment. 
and let me know. YouTubers help support me by liking, subscribing, and sharing. Thanks so much. As part of FTC disclosures, the 319 and 31 as well as the 31 XML2 versions were provided by Through Knife for Review.